it, it's a trap, okay? It's a trap. I already know that, that because of people staying inside more often than usual now, there's going to be an increase of these predatory at-home customer service companies trying to lure you in with hopes and dreams uh, of this perfect, this perfect once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, you, you get to work from your house? Uh, that's cool, right? I mean, just think about it. You, you don't have to use any gas. You're going to be comfortable chilling in your own house. You get to work sitting down? I mean, who wouldn't take this job? Go ahead, shake my hand. And the moment you shake this man's hand, Welcome to the gulags, motherfucker. We now own your dumbass. If you fall for one of these tricks, don't be too ashamed. I used to be a fool just like you. And in fact, twice. This message is more for the people I can still save from being persuaded to willingly accept eternal damnation. I used to work for this customer service company under the client Grubhub. Oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> if you say the word Grubhub or critique them in any way, they take your video down. Well, well what I actually meant is that I work for this customer service company under the client Scup Hub. Yeah, Scup Hub. <laughs> That's what it was. Scup Hub was pretty much a food delivery service, and I was pretty much just a regular customer service agent. We not only had to deal with angry customers, but, you know, since it's food oriented, you gotta deal with angry, hungry customers, which is like 10 times worse. My experience at Scup Hub is what I expect every alternative forms of customer service job will ever be, all right? Uh, dog shit training, out of date equipment, and customers with an unswing determination to make you rethink why you didn't just become a mass murderer instead. These three things separately, you know, they aren't so bad, but, but you know, when you combine them into one job, that's when the blocks start toppling down. Dog shit training. These companies will teach you 7% of all the knowledge you need to do your job, and the rest they say, oh, you just pick it up on the way. And that would make sense, you know, you, you know for a second, you know, it, it makes sense if this wasn't a customer service job. But like, yeah, you know, while the customer's asking for a refund for the order that the restaurant messed up, I'll just tell them, uh oh, you want a refund? Uh, well, here's the problem. We actually haven't learned how to do that yet. Out of date equipment. Sometimes both the physical equipment and applications we use are actually just out of date, prehistoric, not even remotely usable or recognizable by anyone born after the 1800s. We'll have like Windows 98 computers and the only thing compatible with the work applications is, is, is Internet Explorer or Opera. You know? I wouldn't be surprised if I went to a call center and, and saw that they were running all their programs off the first Pong arcade machine. <laughs> Actually, that'd probably be a legitimate upgrade from whatever the hell we were using. Illogical customers. This one's my favorite, all right? There's a difference between servicing a customer in person and servicing a customer over the phone. You see, in person, customers are a lot more wary of what they say because, you know, A, they're in public, they don't want to make themselves seem like an arrogant moron. Uh, obviously, there are some exceptions. And B, there's a slight probability a 0.2% drop chance that the customer service person they decided to disrespect might just lunge over and knock the absolute shit out of them. But, but on the phone, these customers are brave. I, I'll give them that much. They're very brave. You know, they're given much more privacy and security. They have this false sense of, of grandeur and high importance. They're like, my life might be shit and my mom messages me every day to remind me I'm a disappointment to the family, but when I'm talking to a scup hub customer service agent, I'm the man. I'm the man now. But you know, I, I get it. You know, over the phone customers are inherently supposed to be harder, but, but I swear, these customers are literally being paid to not listen to logic. Like some of these customers cannot be real. No, no, no. I, I refuse. I refuse to accept that. They, they, they have to be uh, actors hired by Scubhub themselves. Anytime we start enjoying our job too much, these customers will not listen to reason. They, they, they won't. You can give them basic thorough elaboration and their brain doesn't have the mental capacity to, to compute and understand it. Like, you'd have much more luck trying to communicate to a rat having a stroke than half the customers we got every day. I'll be like, uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but your driver delivering your order, uh, he got into a car crash. He, he actually drove off a bridge. That being said, uh, we're sending another driver out to pick up another order for you. Uh, okay, but w why is it taking so long? What? <laughs> did, did you not just hear what I said? A nigga died. What, what do you mean? Why is it taking so long? We have to send a whole new person to pick up your food. And plus, it's only been like six minutes since you ordered. Okay, but is that my fault? Why, like, why am I being punished and having to wait for something that you guys did? You know, you, you see what I mean? Uh, hello? Sir? Uh, are you there? Can I, can I get a refund? Okay, everybody, can I get a refund for my order? Uh, 
hello. Uh, wait a minute. Let me let me grab the mic. This is uh this is post edit kneecaps. Uh, I'm, ju I'm just here to tell you guys that if you're not following my social media, you will die tonight. In fact, uh, also you have to follow my Discord, or again you will die. I get blood pressure from my back when you tell me I should pull up. Don't pull up, sit back. Tell me should I fall, baby? As long as a strong, baby. Crying back at the seams when I blood pressure to my back. I couldn't help but notice I'm feeling.